Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I plan to read in May. So if you are new to my channel, you probably don't know I have never ever posted a TBR video, ever. <laughs> I don't do TBRs. If you didn't know what TBR means, it means to be read. Normally people put out to be read videos every single month, like they plan which books they really want to read in the month coming up. I never do that because I'm a big mood reader. I normally read based on my mood. Whenever I want to pick up a book, I just pick it up. I don't really follow a guideline of what books I want to read, but um, a lot has been happening in my life recently. Just life in general is crazy right now, so I thought that making a TBR would make it easier on myself, maybe? We'll see, it's a little test trial to see if I'm gonna do good with a TBR because I never really have done one before. Also, in the month of May, one of my fellow small booktubers here Carly Reads. She and a few other of her booktube friends have started the classics a thon and that is happening through the whole entire month of May so I will be talking about some books that I hope to read then. I also have two books that I want to read for the readathon. I have some library books I want to read and I have some new releases that I hopefully will get to. So I got a lot of books to talk about today, so let's get started. So first, I wanna talk about the classics that I hope to read, and I have a stack of classics that I have on my TBR shelf that I haven't read yet, and hopefully the classics a -thon will help me read those books. So for my TBR section for the classics a -thon, I'm just gonna talk about the TBR books that I physically have that I have not read yet, because I don't know which out of those that I'm going to read. So I'm just gonna talk about all the ones I haven't read yet that I hopefully will soon. Right now, I am actually halfway through Little Women by Louisa May Alcott still. I finally got the second half of the audiobook in through the library but it expires in a couple days so I need to get on that sucker but yeah I'm about halfway through it and um, hopefully I'll finish the audiobook very soon if you did not know about this book it is about four sisters all centered around their lives during the Civil War era America and I love it so much I'm totally trash for it next is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I ended up buying this book back in high school and never picked it up. I thought I would have to read it for a class sometime in high school. So I picked it up freshman year just thinking, oh, I'm gonna read it sometime. And I never did actually, it was not a required read for any of my classes. Maybe I read this one, it's very short and Carly just read it and fell in love with it. So hopefully, maybe I'll pick this one up. Next is one that I know that I probably won't get to. We'll see. And that's, um, Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. <laughs> this is a behemoth of a book. I picked this book up and bought it back my senior year of high school because one of my best friends in that class read it for one of his projects and I love the movie so much and I hadn't read the book yet and I never ended up reading it any of it. So I just have this giant behemoth of a book sitting on my TBR shelf and I don't know when I'm gonna read it so maybe Classics of Thon will push me to read it. Next we have Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. Um, I think I got this book for free on like a book sale on my college campus last semester. This is a very strange cover. Um, I've seen two versions of this movie and enjoyed it. I haven't watched the movie in a while so I don't really even remember anything about it but hopefully maybe I'll read this one too. Next we have my collection of Jane Austen novels. I have read um, I think only two of her books. Carly also said that to join the classics a you have to read the two required classic books as like the group read. One of them is Emma by Jane Austen. I have already read this book. This was a book that was required in my um, senior year. English literature class. Um, so I've already read this book, so I don't need to read it again. I really enjoyed this book, one of my favorite Jane Austen books, one of my favorite classic books ever. Love the movie too, especially the BBC version. But the other book is called The Bell Jar. I don't have a physical copy of that. I don't know if I'm going to get to it. I've read Emma, so maybe that's okay for me to have only read one of them. I don't know what the rules are. I have not read Love and Friendship and other youthful writings. I think this is just a short story collection of Jane Austen's. I also have not read Persuasion by her yet. I don't remember what this one is about. I have not read Northanger Abbey either. I have read Pride and Prejudice. We can skip that one on the list. I think one that's a big contender for me that I probably will read in this month is Sense and Sensibility. This is one of the more well-known ones from her. It sounds the most intriguing to me, I think, out of the bunch here, because I also have seen the movie with Kate Winslet and I really enjoyed that one. And lastly, one of my potential reads for classics a -thon is Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. This one also intrigues me. I've seen the movie for this one and I really enjoy it too. Look how pretty these are, gorgeous. 
Okay, now on to the books that are not a part of the classics of Thon. So first thing, I'm gonna start out with the books that I'm currently reading, and it's April 30th at the moment, so I'm hoping to finish these books, like tomorrow in the next couple days. I'm halfway through Days of Blood and Starlight by Lainey Taylor. This is the second book to the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. Um, I am really enjoying this. Listening to the audiobook is fantastic. I think this may be my new favorite series. This first book is called um, Daughter of Smoke and Bone, and this is a fantasy series all about a girl named Karoo who worked for these creatures called the Chimera. Her falling in love with an angel and it like it, it's just a great young adult story, great romance story. I love it and I totally recommend it. I'm loving this second book and I just hope it gets better and better and better by each book. I went to the bookstore I think two days ago um because i got a gift card to barnes and noble recently from my mom so thanks mom and i ended up buying dark lover by jr ward now this series is really popular in the romance community because it's so well known and well loved i think it was written back in 2005 and people still love it to this day so i was like i need to know what this series is about i am on page exactly 100 at the moment. I'm really enjoying it so far. I even have some tabbies in there, so it's very promising so far. But this is like a vampire romance book. It puts vampires in a new light that I never thought about vampires before, and they have different abilities and stuff like that. So I'm really enjoying this book so far, and I hope to finish it in May. I forgot to add Anne of Green Cables and Anne of Babylonia by L.M. Montgomery to my classics of Thon. Here you go. I forgot it. It was deep in the pile. I'm adding this one too. <laughs> Since I'm in the middle of Days of Blood and Starlight by Lainey Taylor, I hope to read Dreams of Gods and Monsters by Lainey Taylor. If you didn't know, there is a Daughter Smoke and Bone read-along happening hosted by Kaz from Little Book Owl and a couple others, and you read one of the books for each month. So far, I'm not on track because I haven't even finished Days of Blood and Starlight, and tomorrow's the first day of May. I really want to read this one. If I'm really loving the second one, I really want to read this one and finish the trilogy. And she has like a little novella all about um, some side characters. Um, that one is called Night of Cake and Puppets. This is all about Susanna and Mick. I believe you're supposed to read it after the second book, so I'm hopefully gonna read this in May 2 before I get to the third book in this series. I just ordered it off of Thrift Books for like four bucks, so hopefully it'll be in in a couple days. Next, I have four library books that I picked up. I don't really remember what any of these are about, so I might just read the back for y'all. Okay, first, out of the library books that I got, I have Piper by Jessica Freeberg and illustrated by Jeff Stokely. This is a graphic novel. Sorry if this looks a little weird, I'm covering up my library's name. Don't want people to know where I go to library. A girl named Maggie who is shunned by her village because she has a disability and her only comfort comes from her vi vivid imagination. She has a gift for inventing stories and dreams of one day finding her fairy tale love. Maggie meets the mysterious Piper. It seems that all of her wishes are coming true. Spellbound Maggie falls hard for him and plunges headfirst into his magical world. But as she grows closer to the Piper, Maggie discovers that he has a dark side. The boy of Maggie's dreams might just turn out to be her worst nightmare. This sounded really interesting and it's a very short graphic novel so I'm probably gonna read this. Next we have Signs Point to Yes by Sandy Hall. If only Jane's magic eight ball could tell her how to get through the summer. With her perfect sister Margot home for her perfect internship, Jane is not going to be able to spend the summer writing fan fiction as she had planned. And her emergency babysitting job requires Jane to spend the whole summer in awkward proximity to her new crush. Tio, a nerdy, hot lifeguard with problems of his own. With his best friend out of town, Tio finds himself without anyone to confide in, except Jane. Will Jane and Tio be able to salvage each other's summer? Even the Magic 8 Ball doesn't have the answers, but signs point to yes. This sounds like a cute contemporary book. Hopefully I can read this next month. It seems super cute. Next we have Hate to Want You by Alicia Ray. I don't know anything about this book. It is a romance book. Uh, I just know that Amy from Book Girl Abroad I will link her channel down below. She talks about this series a lot and is really enjoying it. I saw it at the library and I was like, oh, Amy loves that series. Hopefully I will, so I'm gonna pick it up. One a night, no one will know. That was the deal. Every year, Libby Kane and Nicholas Chandler would share one perfect night of illicit pleasure. The forbidden hours let them forget the tragedy of their haunted pasts and the last names that made them enemies until the night she didn't show up. Now Nicholas has an empire to run. He doesn't have time for distractions and Libby's sudden reappearance in town is a major distraction. She's the one woman he shouldn't want, so why can't he forget how right she feels in his bed? Libby didn't come home for Nicholas, but fate seems to 
determined to remind her of his presence and their past. Although the passion between them might have once run hot and deep, not even love can overcome the scandal that divided their families. Being together might be against all the rules, but being apart is impossible. This sounds like the total guilty pleasure romance book that I hopefully will read really, really soon because this looks so good. Lastly, from the books that I got from the library, we have The Governess Game by Tessa Dare. I've read one Tessa Dare book, but this one seems the most interesting to me. He's been a bad, bad rake, and it takes a governess to teach him a lesson. After her livelihood slips through her fingers, Alexandra Mountbatten takes on an impossible post, transforming a pair of wild orphans into proper young ladies. However, the girls don't need discipline. They need a loving home. Try telling that to their guardian, Chase Raynaud. Duke's heir in the streets and devil in the sheets. The ladies of London have tried and failed to make him settle down. Somehow, Alexandra must reach his heart without risking her own. Like any self-respecting libert libertine, libertine, I'm so sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. Chase lives by one rule, no attachments. When a stubborn little governess tries to reform him, he decides to give her an education in pleasure. That should prove he can't be tamed. But Alexandra is more than he bargained for. Clever, perceptive, passionate. She refuses to see him as a lost cause. Soon the walls around Chase's heart are crumbling and he's in danger of falling hard. This sounds so good. I really want to read this like as my next read. I am totally gonna read this. This, this sounds so, so, so good. I know a lot of people out there are really into Tessa Dare books, so please let me know if anyone wants to buddy read this book in the month of May because I'd totally be up for that because I'm so, so, so excited. I also hope to hopefully finish the Ice Planet Barbarian series by Ruby Dixon. I read quite a few in the month of April, so I'm just gonna list off the ones that I can hopefully finish in the month of May. We'll see, there's a lot. Number 15.5 in the series, The Barbarian Before Christmas, Number 16, Barbarian's Beloved. Number 16.5, A Gift for Drennel. Number 16.6, Barbarian's Valentine. Number 17, Barbarian's Seduction. I also hope to finish the spinoff series to Ice Planet Barbarians called Ice Home. I have read the first two and I hope to maybe read the rest of them. Um, number three is Willa's Beast. Number four, Gale's Family. Number five, Angie's Gladiator. Number six, Hannah's Hero. And number seven, Debbie's Distraction. These are really, really short reads, so hopefully I can fly through these two in the month of May. I also have one audiobook already checked out from Libby on the library. Um, it's called Phoenix Unbound by Grace Draven. And this is a uh, fantasy romance book, and it's about, I think, a woman who escapes um, being executed many times and a man figuring it out and going after her or something like that. I don't really remember, but I love Grace Draven. One of her books, Radiance, is over here, one of my favorite books. And so hopefully that book will be as great as Radiance. And lastly, I'm gonna talk about two of the books that I pre-ordered in the past couple months that come out in May that I'm going to be receiving. First we have coming out on May 7th is The Bride Test by Helen Huang. I read The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. I loved that romance book. This book I know nothing about at all, but it is kind of like a companion to The Kiss Quotient, so I can't wait. And lastly, we have The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren coming out on May 14th. I know nothing about this book, but I'm going to pre-order every single Christina Lauren book that ever comes out. I am loving their romance books a lot. I've only disliked ever one book from them and it was a hate book. I've already unhauled it and I don't re recommend that one, but that wasn't a romance book in a sense. That was a young adult book called Sublime. If you ever see Sublime, I don't recommend that one. I recommend their romance books, not the young adult book that they wrote. But I know nothing about this book, but it is a romance book that I cannot wait for. <laughs> so there y'all have it. Those are a lot, a lot, a lot of books that I hope to read in the month of May. I'm not gonna read all these, I know that. I'm kind of just giving myself a wide range of books that I can read because I really want to read more physically in the month of May. So I have a lot to choose from. Let me know down in the comments below if you are planning on reading any of these books or if you have read any of these books and your opinions on them. Even if you want to buddy read a book with me that I talked about today, please let me know. But anyways, thank y'all so much for watching and I will see y'all soon with a new video. Bye.